Ning Wang, our one and only beautiful Xiao Catalyst who just got more popular after the release of her new outfit. Really happy to see MiHoYo giving her the attention she deserves, especially as a Liu Wei Qi Sing, which is in the similar position as Jin, but one is a 5 star character and the other is a 4 star. So, not sure what MiHoYo was thinking when they were creating Ning Wang. But anyhow, since the arrival of her gorgeous looking outfit and having the chance to get free Ning Wang from the Lantern Right event, I'm sure many of us will be looking to build her, which is a wise choice because she is an amazing DPS. In this video, I'll be going in depth into everything you should know about her talents and skills, weapons and artifacts, as well as her different playstyle in which Ning Wang's healer build is even possible if you're on a budget. So do stay tuned. Now before we hop in, it is the start of February, which means that giveaway time once again. I hope monthly giveaway walk-ins on our discord server so if you want to have a chance to win some walk-ins to save up for upcoming characters like at this point in time Yai Miko then join my discord server to enter link will be down in the description below guys and with that let us jump into the video so first off is a quick overview of Ning Wang even though she is labeled as a four star character Ning Wang is actually one of the strongest four star DPS when dealing with single target enemies and even even under the right circumstances, she can even go head to head with some of the 5 star characters. So if you're a free to play player and is lacking in a DPS, you're going to have a good option to build here. Now her role, as we may have already known, she is a main DPS, however she can also be a sub DPS or even a healer in your team, which is a very interesting build which I'll cover in the later part of this video. But which role you want her to take depends on how you want to use Ning Wang and in what situation of your account so that's going to be on to your choice and now we'll go in depth into Ning Wang's talent skills and then the advanced tip on how to play her as a character Ning Wang's normal attack the sparkling scatter she summons two jades and launch them in a straight path whenever she hits a target a star jade behind Ning Wang will appear and then she can accumulate a total of three star jade from this in other words whenever you hit three normal attack you get three star jade onto Ning Wang now something to note is that if you look at her scalings for her normal attack, you may find that it's going to be quite low. However, this number has to be multiplied by 2 because the numbers here only counts for 1 star jades. But Ning Wang summons 2 every single normal attack so you will have to multiply that by 2. However, the main damage dealing potential of Ning Wang does not come from her normal attack but it is from charge attack. Whenever she performs a charge attack, it will do 2 things. Number 1 is launch a charge attack projectile in a straight line but on top of that it will also launch all the star jades that she currently have up at this point to deal additional damage so if you want to play Ning Wang as a main dps what you want to know is that you have to do her normal attack to accumulate star jade and then afterward deal the charge attack which she does the most damage because it has really good scaling plus provide you a lot more additional damage from the star jade you have accumulated now thanks to Ning Wang's ascension talent one whenever Whenever she performs a charge attack while in the possession of star jade she will not consume any stamina which is a very very good talent for her because many of the time catalyst user does require a lot of stamina consumption from the charge attack but with this talent in hand Ning Wang is able to remove the clunkliness that you might feel from playing Yanfei or Kli because both of those characters really need a lot of stamina management something also to note about star jade is that they are considered as charge attack damage and so any start boost that affects charge attack damage bonus will also affect star jade like the 4 piece bolide and the 4 piece wonder troop will have effect on her star jades now in order to play ning wang efficiently you will have to know about her normal attack animation cancel because we've already known that her maximum dps potential comes from her charge attack because with or without attack animation cancel there's a difference in how fast ning wang is able to dish out her normal attack as you can see here on the screen. Therefore, ideally, we would want to spam her charge attack over and over again as much as possible. So first off, here are some rules when playing Ning Wang. You've got a few options in terms of Ning Wang's combo. You can either do one normal attack into charge attack, which is going to be the best DPS, or you do three normal attack before going into charge attack. However, this is only recommended when you have to either dodge or if you're going for animation cancelling. And so, speaking of animation cancelling, 
you will always want to cancel her normal attack animation. With that, you simply hold forward, which is going to be the W key for keyboard user while you're doing the normal attack. And then you release the W key when you're about to do the charge attack animation. And after that, you hold the W key again when the charge attack is launched so that you can continue into the normal attack animation again. This is going to be the basic level of Ning Wang's attack animation cancel. And if you want to play Ning Wang well, guys, you will have to learn this otherwise you will be losing out on a lot of her dps potential moving on to ning wang's elemental skill which is the jade screen she will summon a screen that can block enemies projectiles for 30 seconds now ning wang's skills is going to be one of the only assets that she's got in terms of dealing aoe damage aside from the small hitbox of her charge attack dealing a bit of aoe and ning wang c1 what's really good about this skill is that after you unlock ning wang's second passive talent and any character that passed by the jade screen will get a 12% geo damage bonus for 12 seconds which is pretty decent. Therefore to maximize Ning Wang DPS once again you will always have to remember to cross the jade screen after you summon it. Some of the things to know about the jade screen is that it will break instantly if you summon it within the hitbox of a huge boss or if it collides with something else for example like Zhongli's pillar it will also break instantly. So do keep that in mind because unless you're at C to Ning Wang, you would never want to have this break otherwise you'll be losing out on a bit of the projectile shield and also the shield damage bonus potential to give to your party members. For Ning Wang's elemental burst star shutters, she will summon a total of 6 gems which is actually different from star jades and then this will home in on the enemies. Now the most important thing about Ning Wang's burst is that if you use her burst during the time when jade screen is on field, it will summon an additional 6 gems which is basically double the power of her burst damage just by having jade screen presence therefore the importance of jade screen being present on fields is even more important now so you do not want to have it break before you use your elemental burst for Ning Wang. Ning Wang's elemental burst is what makes her a really really good single targeted DPS because let's say at talent level 8 she is roughly dealing a thousand four hundred percent damage by just spamming spamming her elemental burst. Now as good as it may sound, there's a problem with the AI targeting with this skill because if there are more than one enemies lying around, all the damage of her elemental burst will be shared because now the gems could randomly go toward each of the enemies that are present on field. And so that's why if you're fighting one on one boss fight, you will get an insane damage value from Ning Wang's elemental burst. However, the damage will be rather on RNG if you're fighting group enemies. Now as for Ning Wang's talent priority, if you're using her as a main DPS, then you will first go for her normal attack and then her burst and then finally her E skill. Normally, I would just leave her E skills on talent level 6 and then focus on getting all the other talent to level 8. If you're going for Ning Wang's burst supports, there are two cases. If you're going for below C6 Ning Wang, then you go for her Q first and then her E and then finally her normal attack. But if you've got a C6 Ning Wang, then you go for her elemental burst first, then her normal attack and then her E, the reason I will explain in the constellation section of Ning Wang. Moving on to Ning Wang's weapon options. For her DPS and burst DPS, these options are mostly going to be the same. First of all is that at this point in time, Ning Wang doesn't have a so-called best in slot options. And so she's got quite a number of different catalyst options that can help her deal pretty good damage. And the differences in damage dealt by these weapons are really really not that big of a difference. So that's something good about Ning Wang. First off, we have the Lost Prayer. It's a very good generalist weapon that any Catalyst DPS can actually use with really good base attack as well as crit rate that it gives really benefits Ning Wang's build. It's passive wise is also very good with the bonus of 10% movement speed up that it gives and also an 8% elemental bonus that increases every 4 seconds for a maximum of 4 times. So you get a total of 32% elemental damage bonus. And so this is so great for DPS Ning Wang because from the passive of this weapon it requires you to be on field for quite a while which is something that Ning Wang's main DPS can really take benefit of. If you're only using Ning Wang as burst support then this weapon is still good however you're not going to be able to pull out the maximum benefit that it gives. Next we've got the Skyward Atlas. Another very good 5 star catalyst option that you get from the standard banner so if you get lucky from playing Genshin Impact for a while you should be able to get your hand on either of 
this weapon, which gives you really high base attack of 48 and also attack focus secondary stats. So this catalyst is going to be a bit harder for you to build because it's only focused on attack stats. So therefore you need to focus more on crit ratio when building. The passive does give you around 12% elemental damage bonus. So it's also a plus. Next we've got the memory of dust. This is a very limited five star options. And I don't normally recommend you to go for this specifically just for Ning Wang. Aesthetic wise, it really fits Ning Wang as a character. However, this catalyst only focus on attack percentage and it requires you to have a shield on your team to pull out the maximum benefits. Now the attack number it gives to you is really really good. So it can make up for the lack of crit ratio you're going to be having on Ning Wang's build. But the fact that this weapon requires you to spend quite a lot of money just to get it, is it really that worth it? Because Ning Wang does have a lot of very good 4 star option. And so speaking of 4 star options, we've got a complete free to play option if you started playing back in 1.6 which is the R5 Dota Coattails. This is going to be the best free to play options for Ning Wang at this point in time. So use it on her if you don't have any other 5 star option that we've mentioned. Next we've got the Solar Pearl as a battle pass catalyst. Since it is a battle pass option, you will have to spend a bit of money on it. So unless you've already got the Dota Coattail, I wouldn't really recommend you using this. And then we've got a very interesting option for her, which is the Wizith. This weapon in the right circumstances will outperform 5 star star catalyst because of a very high amount of crit damage it gives up to 55% and also very decent base attack. Now its passive is something that is very interesting and catchy is that it gives attack elemental damage bonus or EM randomly for you for 10 seconds. And so this is going to be a bit of an RNG. If you get attack and elemental damage bonus it's going to be very very good on Ning Wang. However if you get EM then she's at a huge DPS loss because EM doesn't benefit Ning Wang at all. So this option is going to be more popular for burst DPS Ning Wang. You can use this for a main DPS. However, sustaining the passive isn't really that easy. Now moving on to artifact stats for Ning Wang if you're building main DPS and burst. Because for the bread and butter Ning Wang's artifact sets, you will always want two piece Akai Petra for the 15% yield damage bonus. And then the other two piece you can run either with Gladiator for an 80% attack bonus or the two piece Noblesse oblige if you're running a burst DPS Ning Wang. You also have an option to go with 4 piece noblesse. However, this is going to be quite costly for not just Ning Wang but for the whole team because a lot of other support characters do want noblesse oblige. Also, it's very hard to build good crit ratio when you're running a 4 piece option. And so normally I would just recommend you to stick with 2 piece. Now there's also an option of 4 piece bolide. For this option, I would just say that unless you don't really have any other good option that we've mentioned before then you go with this set because first of all again the four piece is really hard to build around and also normally farming this piece you will generally get other Akai Petra pieces. As for the main stats on each artifact piece you always want to have an attack sans, a geo goblet and an either crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on which stat you are missing. Okay with that being said Ning Wang can also be a healer on your team and this is made possible due to the prototype amber that you can craft in this myth. Normally you wouldn't really want to choose to go for healer Ning Wang. However, this can be very good in a couple of situations like if your account is lacking a healer or if you're running a mono geo team where at this point in time the only official healer is locked behind a C4 Goro. Then healer Ning Wang can perform really well due to the prototype amber's passive plus Ning Wang has really low burst energy allowing her to have her burst almost always on cooldown so she can heal your team once every 6 seconds because the weapon effect goes for 6 seconds while her burst only has 12% cooldown. For this build, you will obviously run her with the prototype amber as the weapon. The higher the refinement, the better. Artifact wise, you've got a couple of options to go for. If you're running her as a full healer, then you can run with 2 piece maiden and 2 piece ocean clam or 4 piece maiden. However, again, it's recommended for just going with 2 piece because it's easier to build around. And then start wise, you can just go with full HP across goblet, cup and circlet. Or you can go with healing bonus on the circlet if you want. However, I don't recommend going with full healer Ning Wang as you're kind of like wasting her high burst damage output. So another option is to build a bit on burst damage by running 4 piece noblesse which is a quite good option. Since you're constantly spamming her burst, getting that bonus 20% boost together with boosting your whole team damage bonus for 12 seconds goes perfectly
immediately with Ning Wang's 12 second cooldown. As for stat wise, since Ning Wang still focus on healing as well, you will want to have them similar to the full healer build, a full HP or healing bonus on the circlet. Onto Ning Wang's constellation, this is where it gets interesting because the more cons Ning Wang has, the more powerful she becomes. C1 gives Ning Wang's normal attack to have access into AoE. Now this may sound interesting, however it doesn't really turn Ning Wang into an amazing DPS through her normal attack because again we only use that to gain star shade. However, this is going to be good for Ning Wang when she goes mining because you can break multiple ores at a time. C2 will refresh Ning Wang's elemental skill if it is broken. This is going to be her most important constellation because it gives Ning Wang more damage, more energy and most importantly it gives you a 100% uptime on your second passive talent. More E skills means that Ning Wang is now able to regenerate your team more energy which is really really good however something to note is that her E skills have kind of like an internal cooldown of 6 seconds which means that if you do your E skills in quick session the first E will generate particles however the second will not so that's something to keep in mind that you have to wait at least 6 seconds before using your second elemental skills for best energy regeneration C3 gives your burst more talent level which is really really good C4 is just a 10% elemental resistance to over your ally near Ning Wang's shade screen which is just so not important C5 increase your talents for your E skills and C6 is where it makes Ning Wang absolute beast meaning that after you use Ning Wang's elemental burst she will spawn 7 star jades behind her a quick damage calculation now if for example your burst talent is at level 11 because you have a C6 Ning Wang's burst you will be getting roughly 3361% damage by firing half a burst to a charge attack of 7 star jades which is an insane number of damage something to note is that you will not be able to carry any extra star jade by doing any more normal attack after you use her elemental burst so always remember right after doing her burst you go into your charge attack for the maximum dps output and now with that we move on to ning wang's team comp whether you're running ning as a dps or sub dps it's always important to run another geo character with her so that you have geo resonance in short it's just a very very beneficial for geo characters since this element can't swirl which you can't get any benefit from some of the best animo support like kazuha sucrose or four piece veridescent best geo support for ning wang at this point in time is going to be zhongli because he again provides shields as well as elemental resistance shreds with high burst damage to support you can also run albedo his elemental skill pair with ning wang works really well which he can does like 10 to 12 k's per bloom helping you deal a lot of dps together and if you're going with the free to play option you have the mc geo traveler c6 geo traveler is a really really good geo support so ning wang has really good geo support options after that you have the remaining two slots usually if you're running a dps ning wang the remaining can be double support like a double pyro like bennett or shang ling or venti to group enemies together or off field damage dealer like fisher and singcho and if you're running her as a sub dps then ning wang can quite literally fits into almost any team comp as long as you're building the other team member well around your other main dps which is going to be a topic of a different video and so ning wang even though it's only a four star character her damage output can be very very good especially her gameplay feels very satisfying as well when you're firing off her burst hitting enemies feels like setting off firework in leeway's night sky during the lantern ride if you've got this character and haven't built her to test her out you'll be surprised at how well she can be for your team so do give her a chance whenever you have the opportunity and so guys i hope the video have been able to give you a full understanding on how to build ning wang if you found the video helpful i have other guides fits for you to check it out as i'm sure it will help you out also if you're new to the channel guys be sure to subscribe to my channel for more of my supra guides news and genshin tips and trick with that i wish you a super day and i will catch you on the next video